Hello guys, welcome back to The Shakedown, episode 7. This is featuring Darren Ng TV. Alright, for you, for the, all of you guys who are watching today, uh, know that you can follow Darren Ng TV for your property updates and investment opportunities. Darren, you want to share a little bit about your YouTube channel? Oh yes, of course. Uh, I'm doing this on a weekly basis. I'm updating Singaporeans and PRs basically in the local market of Singapore what are the ins and outs if they're going to their first residential property or their second residential property, what are the main pointers you should look at and how to make it in a systematic and simple flow, especially if you are your first time coming into the market and not sure what you should look out for or if you're second time and the first time maybe it didn't turn out so well and you're thinking about what can you correct or improve along this journey. Alright, so Darren Ng TV guys, follow them, subscribe, like and we will you will learn so much more in that in that channel. I my personally am uh, a mentee under him and everything I knew was through Darren Ng as well. So do follow him and subscribe. So today we actually want to cover on some of the most important questions that clients ask us but come from their friends or their family. All right. Now the biggest problem that I notice when it comes to working with clients together with Darren as well is that we get a lot of hearsay, all right? We got a lot of, oh, my friend says that HDB is too, HDB is better, HDB is bigger. My parents say, why buy a condo, all right? When like a HDB is actually a much larger space, it's cheaper. Why go buy a two bedder? Why go buy a one bedder? I, I, I honestly am very frustrated by a lot of this information and knowledge that is being passed on to the consumers that is not actually true because like what Darren was saying the other time was that the truth is people or people only buy properties maybe once twice twice in their lives right but we as consultants we buy properties on a daily basis so it doesn't make sense that that they are able to actually or they are qualified to give such advice so maybe we can start off with some of the questions that some of the most annoying questions that you have heard with regards to uh, property purchase actually there is actually a big misconception a mis big misconception um right. i would say a lot of our customers and even uh, people that meet us for the very first time uh, they get a lot of the advice from their parents especially and the parents um, if they're in their early 20s or early 30s their parents should be in a range of maybe in their 50s or maybe early 60s around there mm -hmm. so a lot of them has grown up in a time when um, buying an HDB at $40,000 and today they are sitting on more than half a million dollars mm -hmm. and they, at the time a lot of them have been taught by the schools and even by their friends to find a stable job get uh, a home and save your money for retirement, right? And a lot of them have done that. Mm -hmm. And they pass on the same teaching to uh, their children to say that you do not have to stretch yourself because at the time they are told not to overstretch, right? Uh, a lot of our parents are not very wealthy at that time. And they pass on the same teachings to their children because they want their children to be able to uh, not to be so stressed out, especially when you look at the price increase of present day properties versus at that time. So they always advise their children to go out and just buy something for own stay, do not overstretch and try to pay off the property as fast as possible. But little did they know that a lot of these strategies could have worked for their parents at that time. But today we are buying properties even for a normal HGB, which was which is what um 10 times yeah. the amount of what our parents bought at the time, yeah. right? The installments are different, the interest rates are different, the holding yeah. period is also different, right? And a lot of them, when they bought a property, our parents at $50,000, they could pay off that property perhaps in the first 5 to 10 years. But today, our generation are buying properties and taking on a 25 years loan. Previously, before the announcement was 30 years loan, right? And a lot of them are unable to pay this off in the next five to 10 years. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that when they get themselves into trapped into buying one property and having the same mindset that I'm sort of sit on it till the day I retire and I have paid it off for the next 25 years, 
one main variable they didn't think about is that what happens if they're out of a job when they're in their 40s or in their 50s and they have a lot of loan outstanding still and moreover when our parents paid off their house in the first 5 or 10 years guess what they had the next 20 years working and having their CPF work for them in a CPF account whereas for all of us today, yeah. a lot of them are using this purchase and using a lot of their CPF to pay for the next 25 years. Therefore, resulting to many, you guessed it, negative sales. Yeah, so like, I think the, a very good advice, I'm not sure who told me that. If you follow your parents' advice to make decisions today with regards to property, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't follow your parents' advice. I'm a strong believer in uh, parents' blessing is right, you know. But the truth is this. If you're going to follow your parents' advice with regards to property, and if your parents, that is in the event, your parents are not a property investor, your parents are not people who own multiple properties who are actively investing, if you, are fall, if you fall in the category just like all of us, who our parents are not property investors, and are not in the market, then you are going into a future that does not exist anymore, right? Because what they have done or what they have achieved or what they, they think that they can achieve is no longer possible today. The context is different, the game has changed when it comes to property. In the past, yes, if you buy a big five-room HDB at $90,000, of course you're going to make a lot of money when, it come, when you 20 years later because you bought it at a dirt cheap price but that is not the same anymore. Lease is king and of course prices are not moving the same way. HDB is now at a different timeline. All right. Yeah. Next, next. I think a, a, I think a lot of them are, have to be aware that the, the game for property today mm -hmm. has changed dramatically. We have uh, a lot of a lot of measures that was not in place yeah. during our parents' time. So what you say is true. I think if you expect the same outcome that your folks have, you're going to be very disappointed, right? And in fact, I think um, I think you're, yeah, I think yeah, you're getting yourself into a lot of problems if you don't yeah. plan correctly. Yeah. Like the next big misconception that I think I hear a lot would be. Why buy a uh, one bidder? It's very difficult to sell in the future. I think that, that that's a very frustrating thing that I hear a lot from the audience and the audience or my clients that I meet. They can't understand that a one plus study or a one bidder is actually something that you want to at least start with. Rather than if I can't afford like a three bidder, I don't want to invest in property. Does that make sense to you? I think they do not know what is the reason why they are looking to buy in the first place. They're like, confused, they're like, confused. Like why, they, they can't see the reason behind why buy a one bidder and, and rent and at least grow, at least start somewhere rather than I think you're, I think start moving, nowhere. Yeah, I think you're moving yeah. too fast ahead. Mm. Uh, a lot of buyers, when they want to buy something, they mm. straight away plant their ideal home that they could see themselves in, yeah. which is a beautiful tree yeah. bader at a particular area, yeah. right? But then again, um, not everyone else is born with a silver spoon, right? Yeah. So they're going to take small steps, right? By going into a one bedroom, what is the objective for doing that? Is it going to be for your own stay or is it going to be to rent it out? Yeah. And if they were to do that, do they have a place to stay in the interim? Um, I think for these customers that have that thought is that mm -hmm. if you have saved enough and kept enough to buy a three bedroom property in the future, I'm very certain when they have saved enough for that three bedder, they can't afford it. Because at that time, you can only buy a two bedder. <laughs> Prices are moving way faster yeah. than any human being can save. That's the truth of it. Even if you are earning, can I say 10k salary? It's still impossible to beat how fast prices are moving. Yes. Is it safe to say that? All right. So, uh, to summarize that point is basically you got to start somewhere rather than nowhere. Just because it's a one bidder doesn't mean that uh, your life is over, your property journey is over. You got to at least grow your wealth. Even if you're 36, you're 37, 
it doesn't matter because even if you hold that property for 10 years, you're still 45, you're young. You still have time, you know. 45 is still barely half. It's basically half in, according to... Yeah, it's not even half. Nine, the age expectancy today is at 95, right? Like the life expectancy of a Singaporean. So 45 is still not halfway through your life. You still got a lot of time. But if you don't start today, then you might never ever start. That's the truth. All right, and the last misconception that I hear a lot, how do I put this? Um, okay, when someone buys a property, all right, they want to see short-term gains. They always ask this conception. How, uh, ask this question, but, oh, sorry. Ask this question. <laughs> uh, how much do I stand to gain in the next two years? Or three years can I make this amount and I've, apparently a lot of consultants out there are promising them that you only have to hold the property for three years all right now this is uh, a, a misconception that my industry our industry are guilty of all right now how do you feel about that people out there are gunning for three years to make their investment rather than holding a property for which I personally believe I, I think five years is better right I, I think <clears throat> I, I think what happens is that um, we could estimate that what you could make in the next three years. Why is it three years today? Because of the SSD that we revised from four to three years. Um, before this ruling was done, we were all talking about four years because the holding period was four years before you need to pay in taxes for it. Uh, now it's three years, and there is a certainty, uh, or rather, there is a, a forecast that in the next three years there is a chance for you to actually make some money from it but I wouldn't say it's a whole huge amount, right? But I would say plan your investments or plan your purchase with at least five to eight years in mind. If anything comes earlier, well, it's a bonus for you. Yeah, but do not gun and go all in and hope that within three years, you're gonna see your dream purchase. And do not jump into uh, investment thinking that it's gonna be a short-term thing. Property should always be plan for long term of five years and above. Yeah. Anything below is a bonus. I think they can check, uh, audiences can check us out uh, in our uh, our channel and even in our Instagram pages. We talk a lot about crisis fund, right? Uh, a lot of misconception that the youngsters feel is that they go all in <coughs> to buy something that they really like. They go all in to buy a, a HDB of their dreams, for example, and they totally exhaust all their CPF, right? And they have no provisions of any possible crisis that can actually come upon in the future. So I just felt it's very, very different from our parents at the time because our parents at the time are savers. And for us, when we meet our customers for the past two years, we are quite surprised that families in an income of eight to $15,000, uh, they don't have much savings in the bank. Right? A lot of money is being spent to, for comfort actually. Yeah. I actually got one more uh, misconception that I struggle to actually explain to my clients. Uh, maybe you can enlighten them. Um, people are now buying HDB for investment in terms of rental yield. Mm. Does that make sense if it's their first property? And they're buying under two names. They're very good to stay. They carry on living their parents. Okay. Buy or maybe, rental actually, I notice this a lot with our single buyers. They buy a three-room flat for investment, but they carry on staying with their parents or whoever, they are, maybe their sister. But they think that because they have just turned 35, buying HDB for just because you can, makes sense. Um, just to collect money. I wouldn't say it is. I wouldn't say it is wrong. What I would say is that perhaps they were not. It was not known to them on what could be a better viable option, number one. Uh, I think you can say your parents is really, very good. But to put, I, I think it's about asking yourself, if you have this much of resources, what mm. would be a better asset class to go into? And what are the risk factors involved in that particular asset class? Mm. But if today you're just going in because you are just scared, because you're lack of knowledge, or you just don't want to take the risk and you want to buy a HGB for investment, 
Mm. So you ask yourself a few possibilities. Yes, you could actually get some rental income from it, number one. But in the first five years, you got to they have to know that they cannot, right, stay with the parents because they are renting out the bedrooms. So there's a lot of misconception on the ground that says that ah, it doesn't matter. I'll just lock up one one room, and the government doesn't know. Well, they will know. They will find out. And you will lose your house and and pay a fine for it, right? So if you want to do a room rental, they, a lot of them think that I can just stay in my house, lock a room, and rent it out. It's very dangerous. You might lose a house, and you can or you can only do that for two bedrooms. So you have to stay in the house for the next five years, right? Mm -hmm. I think you got to ask himself, being thirty five years old, getting uh, having a license per se to buy an HDB property, right? Mm -hmm. What do they want to gain from this HDB, right? If you are looking for just rental returns, that could make sense if it's okay for them for the next 30 years, for example. But do they intend to exit from this property? And if they do, how are they going to exit if they leave the property there for 30 years? Right? And if they had known another path, because um, a lot of them takes, took this easy way out, but if you were to ask these buyers, they actually rather have a capital gains from the property. And if they did plan their finances correctly, if they got themselves into a private property because they've already that they don't have this issue of where do they need to stay. They just have they have a place to stay already. So they can put all this money to work for them. Right? So my energy I wish share with my customers is this is like you spend so much time exchanging your time for money every day you go to work, it's exchanging your time for money. Right? But after you spend so much time for the past, what, if you're 35 years old, you could have spent a good 12 years working outside, right? Mm. All this money in the CPF and the cash that you have saved or kept for the past 12 years should be put to work for them to make better returns so that they can enjoy more in their later years. Yeah. So if they know what, are, what is really great for a private property and what is the potential for it versus HGB and rental, I think if they have a chance to watch this video, yeah, then they will be more enlightened. I think that a lot of people do not take ownership for their CPF. They think that, oh, I just have a lot of CPF in there. I can't use it anyway. They don't understand how long it actually takes to save maybe 200,000 or 300,000 worth of CPF inside your OA, right? If you can take ownership for it, you will be more prudent and more careful about what you're buying. People often go for the HD because it's the easier approach rather than, uh, you know, they rather than go invest in a private property and having to come out that cash. They don't understand that this is like 300,000 is not easy to save and you wouldn't have it if the government didn't force you to save it, right? So, actually, actually sorry, just, a thought just came to me. What if these buyers look at CPF as hardcore cash. Hardcore cash. Then you would... Would they put the money into was... that property? Or would they then think really hard? Imagine them having this in the bank. Yeah. Would they think about just buying HDB? Chances are they would not. They just feel that, hey, I just want to work my CPF harder for me. But guess what? The CPF platform is already working very hard for you. People don't see the value of it, so they just uh, yeah. burn it all. Because understand that in today's market, that it's very high chance that if you put buy something at 500k in the next 25 years, it's going to be way below 400,000 even, right? So be very careful on what you're putting your money in, right? Do you know that many people? Uh, do you know how much a CPF pay you in interest? Now it's 2.5 percent, right? 2.5 percent. Hmm. Do you know they pay you 3.5%? Hmm? I did not know that. Yeah, a lot of them do not know that. They pay 3.5% for their first $20,000 in the old age. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but they, they, a lot of them wipe out everything. So they, you folks out there, got to pay yourself 3.5%. So does that mean that it's compounding on two different timelines? The first 20000 is compounding separately, and yes. then the rest of the amount is compounding at 2.5%? Correct. Oh, Correct. interesting. Yeah. So I think, I think if you're going to this purchase, um, I understand that DIY is perfectly fine today. Mm -hmm. But DIY, please find out as much as you can pertaining to uh, IRA, IRAs, pertaining to your CPF, and what is really what works in real estate. Because um, you put so much time over the years, you spend so much time working, 
I think you should put your money to good use. Right. Do you have any last misconceptions that you have heard from friends, families, relatives? I think the misconception that a lot of um, buyers have is they cannot afford a prior property. They think that it's something really out of reach and I really felt that um, they should surround themselves with correct people, right? Uh, if you asked your friends, if you asked your family members and if every one of them stays in the HDB, what would they tell you? Buy an HDB. If you have friends and relatives staying in the condominium, they will tell you to buy a condominium. Alright, so get whatever information that you need, right? Google has a lot of information, right? But uh, what really works in and out, you can ask a professional to, to, uh, to, sh to share with you and then make your best decision. Or yeah. you can go ahead and actually sign up for the fast track method, is that it? Fast That's track right. property fast method. Fast track property method. Yeah. It's going to be launched in the next few days. Uh, I think uh, mm. my guys are launching it already. So this is an online class that you guys can can, can go ahead and, and uh, catch it. Alright, so do look out for that. Do subscribe and like Darren Ng TV as well as Property Secrets. My name is Sheikh Amr. Hi, I'm Darren Ng. And we will see you soon.